And now for something completely different, a man with three. Hello everyone. Uh, today, we're not gonna talk about Wi-Fi. We're gonna talk about something different. We're gonna talk about telescopes. This is my telescope. There are many like it, but this one is mine. I've recently been trying to get into astrophotography. So I found this telescope on an online classified. Uh, it was in pretty sad shape. So we're gonna, today we're gonna talk about what I've done to it and maybe share with you some of the pretty pictures I've been taking. So let's get into it. So this is a Mead LXD 55. It's a eight inch Schmidt Newtonian. Uh, if you don't know what that means, it's like a Newtonian, it has a primary mirror in the back, except for a Schmidt Newtonian, instead of using a parabolic mirror, it uses a spherical mirror. And then it uses a corrector plate on the front here to correct for all the chromatic aberration that a spherical mirror would cause. It has a secondary mirror just positioned in the middle there without any spider veins uh, to go to the to the eyepiece. When I first got it, it came with the Mead LXD 55 mount tripod. The mount was in really bad shape. It had cross-threaded screws. It had zip ties holding it together. So this telescope is known for not having a great focuser. Found this focuser on Amazon it was 99 bucks. It's a dual speed Crayford focuser, the cheapest one I could find. But so far, it's been working great. The focuser itself doesn't have a lot of backlash. It is a dual speed, so it does have a 10 to one focuser here on the end. That does have just a little bit of backlash on it, but I use a Batonoff mask to focus with, and so it's pretty easy to get it into focus. And it seems to stay in focus once I get it there. This is my camera I'm using now. It's a Canon DSLR, a model SL1. It's the smallest DSLR that Canon's ever made. It only weighs 13 grams. That's one thing I've really been dealing with lately is, is weight. Um, I know that everything together, this telescope, camera, and everything, way over budget for this mount that I have it on, but I do the best I can because I don't have a lot of money to spend on things. Camera itself is a 20 megapixel has a 4.3 micron pixel, has a USB 2 port on it, and I use a, an AC adapter, so I don't have to worry about batteries. All right, let's talk about the mount. Uh, when I first bought the telescope, it had an LXD 55 mount. It had Teflon bearings. Did the best I could with it. I looked up the pinouts for the serial cable online, soldered together a serial cable, the RJ11 jack from the hand controller to a DB9 serial port, and then I used a serial to USB adapter to plug it into a laptop. The most I could get with that mount, of course I'm unguided right at the moment, was about 30 second exposures before they started looking horrible. But then this mount came available online. It's a Brazier Exos 2, one of their first first models. It, it didn't have any ASCOM drivers. It didn't have any way to plug it into a computer. This model was built before Explorer Scientific bought Brazier, so it didn't have any of the cool stuff. Um, it is a nice mount though, two inch stainless steel legs. Uh, it looked brand new when I bought it. it. I don't think it, whoever had it before me had even used it because they probably couldn't figure out how to. Then I found an open source controller online. That's called OnStep. That's what this little box right there is. It's a basically a 3D printer board with firmware that's been created to control telescopes with stepper drivers. I put stepper motors and a belt drive system on this. And I use this computer right here that I got at a surplus sale. It didn't have a hard drive or memory in it when I bought it. It cost me 25 bucks, but I, I'm in IT, so I kind of have those things laying around. It's a Lenovo Think Center, the Core i5, so it's got eight gigs of RAM. I put an SSD drive in it. Windows 10, I use Nina for my acquisition software. It's free, it's awesome. This wirelessly connects to my network in my house and 
as it takes pictures, it pushes it to my server on in my basement. So when I get up in the morning, my pictures are all ready to process. Other things I've done to this mount, I, I hyper-tuned it when, it when I was putting it together to put the on-step controller on. I tore it all completely apart. Spent a lot of time on the worm gears trying to get the backlash out. Since I've put this back together, I can get 60 second exposures without them starting to look too horrible. We'll look at those in a minute. So let's see how cheap I really am. This is a batten off mask I use. Uh, I have access to a 3D printer at work. All I have to do is supply my own filament. I found a batten off mask generator online. You put in the diameter of your telescope optic. Uh, if there's any central obstruction, you put that in. After I created the file for the batten off mask, I pulled it into Tinkercad, which is an online 3D CAD program to actually create the 3D object that I could import into my into my 3D printer software. And I'm really sorry for all the noise. I live on a very busy street. My backyard uh, pretty much faces a strip mall back there. Um, I have a lot of light pollution. I have a cafe reel right directly through my backyard that blasts into the backyard so I have to I hang up a tarp a lot of the times to try and block some of the light and I have street lights traffic signal right over there so that's just some of the stuff I have to deal with this is the cheapest LED panel you can find on Amazon I think I paid $13 for it it's what I use to shoot my flats it seems to work good I just turn it down all the way this is my high dollar dew shield uh, it's a camp mat sprayed it flat black on the inside I haven't had any problem with dew since I started using it although I don't shoot very long in the winter the longest I've ever shot is probably th three or four hours but it seems to work so I guess that's all we can talk about the equipment for right now as you can tell I'm a DIYer I like to do everything as cheap as possible and try and get the best results I can without spending a lot of money. So let's go look at some pretty pictures I took in the house. Okay, let's look at a few pictures here. Um, since it was galaxy season just recently, I think we'll start out with a few galaxies that I've shot. All of these pictures are 60 second subs um, usually between six to eight hours of integration depending on the clouds usually one or two nights worth so this is m33 the triangling galaxy one of my first galaxies i've shot Here is M101, the pinwheel galaxy. And the last couple of galaxies I shot were M81 and M82. This one a little bit over-processed. Uh, it's shot towards the north, so that's right over Cafe Rio, so I'm dealing with a lot of light pollution there. Now we'll move on to few nebulas that I've shot. This is a rosette, or at least as much of the rosette as you can get with an 800 millimeter focal length. 
all of these are shot with my eight inch reflector, uh, 812 millimeter focal length, F4. Unguided, unmodified DSLR. Pleiades. M13, the Hercules cluster. And another really overly processed shot, um, Flame Nebula and Horsehead Nebula. I think that night I was dealing with the full moon too, so I made the sky too black. And my last picture, the one that I'm happiest with so far, Orion and the Running Man. Kind of happy with all this dark nebulosity I got up in the top right. All of these are processed using Cyril. It's a free stacking program and then touch-ups in the GIMP sticking with the cheap theme okay so if you guys have any suggestions for me or anything I can do better let me know in the comments all right well if you found this video interesting anyway let me know in the comments um, I'm open for any suggestions you got how I can improve I'm expecting all you smart people on YouTube to let me know what I'm doing wrong or anything I can do better if this is interesting and you want to see more let me know in the comments um, like, share, subscribe, whatever it takes. I think I may do another video on actually how I replaced the focuser on, on the telescope. That was a fun project. It's not that hard. If you put your mind to it, you can do it too. So, all right, well, later on, clouds suck. Thank you.